Hey there, it's Louie, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn a crocheted pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern. Now, I have tried to make a bunch of different jack-o'-lanterns, and I've tried a bunch of different methods from embroidering to even doing a color-changed jack-o'-lantern, and it does work, but it's just not as good as I was really hoping. So, I instead tried using needle felting, and it worked so, so well. So this video will kind of act as a bit of a needle felting tutorial, as well as a how to make jack-o'-lanterns tutorial, but there's a lot more to making needle felting than I can just do in this video. So I will be working on a larger needle felting video um, for crochet in the future. So make sure to like and subscribe subscribe if you haven't already. Um, it's a great way to support this channel if you would like to. You can also check out more Halloween patterns like all the ones you see in the background here at clubcrochet.com slash Halloween. As you can see, I like to make Halloween patterns a lot. Um, okay, well, without further ado, let's talk about all the different materials that you're going to need for this uh, tutorial. For this pattern, you're going to need a few different things, the first of which is going to be a crocheted pumpkin. Of course you're gonna need a crocheted pumpkin. Now I do have a tutorial obviously for how to crochet a pumpkin and I'm really really proud of it. Uh, you can find it linked in the description below. Uh, it teaches you how to make a crocheted pumpkin in a bunch of different sizes if you'd like. Uh, but yeah, you'll need of course a crocheted pumpkin. I suggest, uh, well actually you can crochet a pumpkin in any kind of felt or any kind of materials that you want. I do find that needle felting into a uh, a type of material that is a little bit um, more fuzzy, like wool, uh, is a little bit easier, but it can be done in cotton as well. So if you just have cotton, that's not a big deal at all. You just need to poke it more. Um, so of course you'll need a crocheted pumpkin. You'll need some felt. I suggest using just some regular black felt like this. You can use needle felt itself if you have that as well, but it's a little bit more difficult to make it perfectly placed and perfectly shaped uh, if you don't just use regular felt like this. It's just a little bit easier to use regular felt. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion on that. Uh, and then of course you're going to need a needle felting tool, which looks like this. Now you can get them in all different shapes and sizes actually. Uh, you can use them just like the bare needle but what's important about a needle felting tool is if you look really close I don't know yeah there you go you can kind of see it see how there's little jagged marks in it that's going to help hold the felt and push it into the into the crochet so that the fibers of the felt connect to the crochet itself so you want to use a needle felting tool a regular needle is not going to work um, you can usually find these at any kind of hobby stores um, or online uh, they're pretty readily available I like using one with a little handle but you don't really need it that way and there also are versions of it like this that are like a bunch of needle felting tools all in one you won't need this crazy tool all you really need is just one little needle so we're going to go ahead and put this one to the side and not accidentally uh poke ourselves a whole bunch and we're going to go ahead and cap that one too until we're ready to use it um besides the needle felting tool the crocheted pumpkin and a some felt you'll also need some scissors to cut the felt uh but besides that that is all you need uh so let's go ahead and add a pumpkin face to our uh, crocheted pumpkin here. Okay, so to add a face onto our jack-o'-lantern here, what we're gonna need is our felt. Now, the first thing we wanna, wanna do is cut out our shapes for our felt. Um, I always like to start, of course, with our eyes and then move on to the nose later. So I've got just a little triangle here. That's gonna be a little bit big. So let's go ahead and reshape it. How, whatever size you end up making out of your felt is gonna be the size and shape that is gonna be on the face. Um, I have found slight variation, but not too much. So I would get it as close as possible to what you want. I'm also gonna try to match this on the other side as well. Um, so that both of the eyes are made in a similar fashion. So you can see how I'm just cutting off the corners there. I don't know if I necessarily need to cut the corners off like that, but it does somewhat help. So what's nice about this is that you can actually kind of place it in, sh in its spot as you go. So that looks like it'll be a pretty good spot for it. Actually, let's try to make that the center. So we'll go like right here with it. I usually like to use the other eye to kind of find the shape of the next one. So I'll cut a little piece of felt out 
roughly the same size, and then I'll cut out the same exact shape as before in our other side of the felt so that they're at, as close as possible to the same size. Just makes our life a little bit easier than re rather than uh, you know trying to guess the basic shape that we made before. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead, I'm just gonna trim this bottom one just a little bit in the corners as well even though that's probably not even that necessary. <laughs> okay, so we got our eyes now. Let's add a nose. For the nose, I'm just cutting out a slightly smaller triangle. You don't wanna go too tiny with these triangles. Um, the smallest I have done for a crocheted pumpkin for the nose is this small, but that is like pushing it. So I wouldn't say go any smaller than that for needle felting. Uh, I mean, you probably can, but it makes it way difficult for the felt to actually you know, connect to the pumpkin itself. So I kind of suggest using a slightly larger nose like that. Okay, the last thing we want to make is a mouth. The mouth, how I shape the mouth for this is I usually find the two edges on how long the mouth is going to be. So about like that long looks pretty good. And I'll put a little cut there to mark it. And then I'm going to cut out basically a little bit of a square. Um, we don't need to get too technical with this. That's probably pretty good. And then I'm going to fold this square in half and then cut the mouth out while it's in half like that. So both sides of the mouth are the same shape. So I'm going to go from the corner right here and I'm going to start by crocheting just a like a crescent basically. Like that. Now we're probably going to need it way, way smaller than that, but it's a good start to get us the basic shape and idea. I don't know where our nose went, but I'll find that in just a second. So that's a pretty good shape. We're going to probably want it smaller than that though. So what I'll do now is let's go ahead. I'm just going to cut off in a straight line, straight up. Um, we can fold it actually too. It might make it a little bit more even just like that. I'll go a little lower. Let's try right there. Okay. And let's see that. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. The last part that I want to do for this mouth is I want to add some teeth and stuff to it. So I'm going to start by adding the bottom tooth, which is going to go about right here. And you can see I also folded it in half so I can make both of the teeth on the opposite sides in the same ish position. So we're going to go like that. I actually cut that a little bit high, but it's going to be all right. You just want to cut out any of the shape that you don't want. So you can see how I kind of cut into that right there. Don't worry about that too much. It should be fine when we go to needle felt it. And we'll go ahead, do the same on this side. And don't worry about little bits like that too. It's probably not going to be a problem at all. The last thing is we're going to cut a little notch out the top like that. So that way we have a top tooth also. So you're kind of trying to think like the opposite of the sil or you know the silhouette of it is what we're kind of aiming for here. So that should be pretty good actually. I, I like that. Pretty simple, pretty classic, but I like it. Now let's add back on our little nose and make sure everything is perfectly where we want it to be on the face before we actually start needle felting it because you cannot remove it. Once it starts needle felting, that's that for it. So I'm kind of lining the face up using my stitches to kind of make sure that they are evenly aligned on the face. I actually think I like the nose a little bit higher and then we'll go a little bit higher on the mouth as well like that. So that's about, I think, where I want the face. I love the little curly cue at the top. The last part we're gonna need to do is actually needle felt it. Now to needle felt the face, I usually like to start and hold the position down and start by hitting the tops of your piece. So hit the corners of all of your piece so that it kind of keeps it in position a little bit. But every single time I'm stabbing this into the face here, it's putting a little bit more of the fibers of the felt themselves into the stitches. So you can kind of hear how it's 
kind of sounds crispy, and that's because it's going into the fibers of the stitches, and it's pushing the fibers of the felt into the stitches themselves. So you can kind of see how it was starting to peel off there. That's why you really want to make sure you get all the corners first, and then we're going to go crazy on the middle of it. Make sure to watch out for your finger there. Your finger could get snagged, and it does hurt because these are very sharp. Okay, so that's a pretty good start by just going into all the corners. Now I'm just going to go crazy with it and just start poking it all over the place. You, the more you poke it, the more it's going to stay into the piece. And that's going to be really important. You can see the face kind of fell off, so we'll have to reposition everything after this. But what's going to be really important here, especially if you're making this on cotton, is that you really want to make sure it is in the stitches as much as possible so it doesn't come off. If you're making, if you're doing this on something like wool, this, this part is going to be way, way easier because it's going to have a lot more fibers for the fibers of the felt to connect to as you stab them. That's probably pretty good for one eye. I'm going to go ahead. It's, it's a little bit, you can see how it's kind of like shrank down a little bit. Um, so just watch for that. I'm going to do the same thing over here and position this one and then I'll do the same for the nose and then the mouth. Um, and maybe I'll just time lapse this or maybe I'll just cut. Uh, we'll see how well I do. Okay, now this is gonna be the hard part, is the mouth here. It's gonna be pretty tough, so we gotta be very careful and really make sure that we get the corners of the mouth before we really start going crazy with it because we want them to be perfectly positioned so that it doesn't get off center. Okay, I think that is about pretty good. Um, it kept most of the uh, shaping pretty nicely. Um, I did lose a little bit of shaping in this tooth right here, but I you can kind of like poke your way around. It's, it's very forgiving in that sense. Now, as you can kind of see, I keep poking my stuffing out, so I have to like kind of poke that out uh, or pull that out while I go. But for the most part, it did what I needed it to. Now, I will say you can peel these off if you really, really want to, especially um, if you're using fiber like cotton rather than something like wool. These ones are pretty substantially in there. Um, but on cotton, it's a little bit iffy. Um, it's not that bad. Like, I can't really peel it off. But uh, if, you know, if you try hard enough, it will come off, but it'll still leave a lingering design. Obviously, it's not very hard for you to reapply it, though, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but I would be careful giving this to children because, I don't know, I could see them, like, putting their mouths all over it and, like, eating some of the felt. So, I don't know, maybe be careful about that. But for the most part, that looks pretty great to me. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed making it. It's pretty fun to just go and stab something a bunch, I'm not gonna lie. It's also kind of uh, very jack-o'-lantern-like, you know, like actually making a jack-o'-lantern. At least that's what, how I felt as I was going through it. Well, anyhow, if you like this video, please like down below and subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna check out more of our Halloween-themed patterns, like our little finger puppet crocheted ghosts and frankensteins or giant candy corns you can find links to all of them at clubcrochet.com slash halloween thanks again for watching pasta la pizza happy hooking and i'll see you in the next one bye